Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our very first virtual United Way of Miami-Dade Annual Meeting and Volunteer Awards Program. I am Maria Alonzo, and I am honored to be President and CEO of Your United Way. Like many in our South Florida community and across the globe, I have been struggling to make sense of the events that tear at our social fabric. George Floyd's senseless death has been the tipping point for all of us to come together and say, enough is enough. We live in a community that is diverse in its racial and economic makeup, and we must embrace that diversity and focus on inclusion and equity, weed out the hate and divisiveness. I deeply believe in our mission and our core principles that guide our work to elevate the quality of life for our neighbors and that every man, woman, and child enjoy the same opportunities. Our work is guided by respect, justice, dignity, and equity. This means economic and racial equity and an end once and for all to racism. Our country and our community is at a crossroad. We cannot and will not be silent observers. We must and will be active participants and work together with other organizations, civic and community leaders to stamp out systemic inequities, racism and prejudice in our community. We have witnessed our community's generous spirit come together to help strangers and friends alike. I truly believe we can seize this moment to create real change. We have faced many crises, but none more challenging nor as unpredictable as COVID-19. Our response was immediate, even before we really understood the scope of what we were up against. Through our partnership with the Miami Herald, El Nuevo Herald, we activated our emergency response initiative, Operation Helping Hands, in mid-March. Through Operation Helping Hands, we launched the Miami Pandemic Response Fund with $500,000 in seed funding created through an unprecedented funders collaborative to respond to this emergency. This initial group included the Frederick A. DeLuca Foundation, the Greater Miami Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Health Foundation of South Florida, the Miami Foundation, and United Way. The collaborative has since attracted additional support from other key funders, such as the Children's Trust, Knight Foundation, Helios Education Foundation, Allegheny Franciscan Ministries, Jewish Federation of Greater Miami, Fisher Island Philanthropic Fund, in addition to our incredible corporate partners and thousands of individuals. In a matter of a few weeks, the number of applications received were emblematic of the great need for emergency assistance in our community, such as for assistance with rent and mortgage, food and medication. To date, the fund has raised more than $3.6 million and has provided relief to more than 3,200 neighbors impacted by reduced hours, furloughs, and layoffs. Most of these affected are Alice families who, although employed, they're not making enough to cover basic expenses and are already living in or one emergency away from poverty. For us in Miami-Dade, that means nearly five in 10 households, or 54%. While our state and county begin to slowly lift restrictions, a long and difficult road lies ahead as businesses struggle to reopen and families try to keep their head above water. And while these are the numbers, let me share a few stories of the lives that we have touched, the neighbors that we have helped the embodiment of our community's compassion and the impact of philanthropy. This is Sender, a father of two who lost his job at a diner and was able to receive assistance to pay rent and electricity. Guadalupe, a single mom laid off from her job at a plant nursery, was able to cover rent and buy groceries to feed her three children. And Kyle, an Air Force veteran who just last year moved to Miami to buy a home and start a family, but had to use up most of their savings after his wife was furloughed. He received help to pay rent and buy groceries, and we are happy to welcome their new baby boy. As part of the broader Miami Pandemic Response Fund and with small businesses a backbone of our local economy, we also launched the Small Business Assistance Program in partnership with branches to help small businesses that may not be eligible for other assistance. 
acting as a clearinghouse, we processed 883 applications and 50 small businesses have so far received micro grants to help them continue to operate and provide jobs in our community during this slowdown. These businesses have also received technical assistance to help them emerge from the crisis poised for growth and sustainability. Instrumental to the COVID-19 emergency response efforts, VolunteerMiami.org became the go-to portal for not only United Way, but for community partners and local nonprofits to facilitate registration for much needed volunteers to help our community. More than 900 volunteers completed their volunteer activity clocking in a total of nearly 3,600 hours. Food distributions to help our community's most vulnerable were coordinated across the county. Through partnerships and donations, and with the help of more than 900 volunteers, we helped distribute care packages and food baskets to more than 17,700 families in need, including those of our Early Head Start program, Miami-Dade County Public Schools, as well as veterans. We also launched an online storytelling campaign for young children to help fill the gap created by school closures and cancellations of early literacy programs. With all adult care centers closed, we activated phone banks to inform older adults of the closures and to coordinate meal deliveries. Over 10,000 meals were delivered to 1,700 older adults. And for the true heroes of this pandemic, our frontline personnel and first responders who risk their lives to save others. Our Letters to Heroes campaign was swamped within only a few weeks with more than a thousand inspiring letters from members in our community, expressing gratitude and appreciation for our heroes' unwavering dedication and commitment. Over 300 letters have been distributed to Jackson Health System, UHealth, Baptist Health, and UPS employees, and more are being sent to Target, USPS, FedEx, and Sedano's employees. And lastly, behind the scenes, our advocacy efforts mobilize support of federal relief for individuals, families, nonprofits, and businesses by calling upon our congressional leaders to pass the CARES Act. Legislation was signed March 27th and provided desperately needed aid. And since we have been invited to participate in numerous webinars to provide knowledge and technical expertise to other nonprofits, as well as assistance in navigating emergency and crisis response. By no means is this pandemic behind us. We all know we are living in challenging times. Our world is changing so rapidly and the human need all the greater. It is why our work in education, financial stability and health is more important than ever. And I'm proud to share with you many of our accomplishments this year before COVID-19 took all the spotlight. In education, we continue to level the playing field for our community's children by expanding our impact to low-income areas and families. Our Early Head Start program received high marks by the Administration for Children and Families and Office of Head Start in its federal review. We also continue to expand our reach. United Way Eden Place, in partnership with St. La Haitian Neighborhood Center, opened its second location in North Miami, where 71% of households are identified as Alice. The center empowers families to become involved in their children's schooling and development through on-demand free services, ranging from education and financial literacy workshops and one-on-one -on -one assistance to parenting skills and family coaching. One of the accomplishments that I'm particularly proud of is the 10th anniversary of our United Way Center for Financial Stability. The center holds a special place. At the time, I was co-chairing the Financial Stability Impact Council and the center was initially foreseen as a pilot program. Who knew? Today, we have three locations and various satellite sites throughout Miami-Dade and have provided more than 31,000 working individuals and families with the guidance and support they needed to better manage their economic situation and accelerate their path to financial resilience and empowerment. In health, we continue to push the envelope by applying a holistic approach to learning. We opened our second HEAL site, 
at Jorge Mascanosa Middle School, where an area has been repurposed as a garden. Studies show that school gardens are tied to higher science grades and better eating habits. For the children in underserved communities, these gardens can provide them access to and possibly awaken their curiosity in STEM. Today, we are proud to work with a family of 57 nonprofits. I hope many of our agencies, their staffs and volunteers are with us this morning. Every day, they are on the front lines and thanks to their commitment, thousands of our neighbors are better off today thanks to their efforts. We want to take a moment to recognize this year's number one campaign as they celebrate 40 years in our community. Public Supermarkets has been one of our top campaigns for decades, raising in excess of $48 million for our community. Thank you to all Publix employees for your generosity. And I would like to recognize Publix Regional Director, Jerry Reed, for his continued support. We want to celebrate our success over the years in leadership giving. We are also home to one of the most successful Tocqueville and Million Dollar Roundtable programs in the country. And this year, we were honored to celebrate the collective power of philanthropy at our Tocqueville Society reception at the stunning home of June and Alan Morris by recognizing a remarkable couple in our community, Swanee and Paul Damari. Congratulations. The grand reception kicked off our busy event season, followed by Veritage Miami. But just as we were gaining steam, we had to switch gears to adapt and reinvent. Our annual Women United Breakfast featuring US soccer coach Jill Ellis was our first event to go digital. What would have gathered a thousand women at the University of Miami's Watsco Center became a virtual success that reached an even broader audience and continues to inspire well after the event would have taken place, thanks to our creative and innovative staff. And now I'd like to take a couple of minutes to recognize this remarkable team, our United Way staff who work hard every day, but especially throughout the lockdown to continue to engage our community and to provide for our residents during these difficult times. Thank you for your dedication, commitment, compassion and drive no matter the circumstances. We'd like to share with you now our United Way colleagues who are celebrating service milestones. Congratulations, team. We have so much more to share with you, but we are mindful of your time. And so we hope you were able to enjoy more of this year's happenings on the slideshow at the beginning of our program. And if you logged in late or mid-program, you can check it out following the award presentation. Lastly, our annual report will soon be published and available online. This too will allow us to share our many accomplishments and contributions of the past year in building a stronger Miami. This morning, we have two items on our agenda. Our business meeting, where we will announce our new board members and executive committee, followed by my favorite part of the annual meeting, recognizing our outstanding volunteers and professionals. At this moment, Let's celebrate United Way with the multi-talented Freedom Riders from Miami Norland Senior High School performing United Way. Without a sense of caring, there can be no sense of community. We see why we have United Way. The people have united ways to fund ways for countries like us to prosper. 1887, it started with five people in Denver, Colorado. Francis Jacob. Myron Reed. William Orion. William Friedman. Dean Hart. Great people came together to United Way. Their mission was to improve lives, mobilizing the caring power of communities around the world. With that mission came unbelievable success. Thousands became, became millions. millions, millions became billions, billions, racking up for the greater good. They solved living conditions in South America, provided antidotes for Africa, equipped the poor in Europe, aided Asia from natural disasters, answered the cries of Australia, and ended the nightmares of homelessness in North America. Onto the bustling streets of New York, to the bright lights in Las Vegas, the twin cities of Minneapolis, to the cold nights in Atlanta, and, and the hot beaches, beaches in Miami. Miami. Currently, they are teaching lessons with thousands of classrooms built in the Philippines, helping to abolish unemployment with the job training in Cincinnati, exterminating problems, the thousands of 
next distributed in Uganda. With, with the virtue of charity, charity, United Way is not only a symbol, but also provided. Given the opportunity. For people of all ages to come together and benefit their communities. Changing the lives, not only the ones receiving, but the ones giving too. United Way has touched so many lives and continues to do so. As, As for this, this new decade, decade. Fighting the good fight for 5 billion people to get better jobs. Helping 95% of students graduating high school be prepared for college and the real world. Nursing up to 90% of people and making them healthy. Let's remember the right way, the United Way. The, the next time, time we hear anything, anything about United, United way, way, we'll open our arms full of charity. Our hearts full of love. Our minds full of kindness. Because so it, it won't just benefit, benefit us. us. It'll help educate a child in a third world country. It'll feed someone starving. It'll cure someone with an intolerable disease. It'll work to make the world united. One, one way, way at a time. time. Please join me in giving them a virtual round of applause. And now, it's my privilege to hand over the floor, or in this case, the screen, to Carlos Migoya for the business portion of our meeting, his official last act as chairman of our board. We will formally recognize Carlos a little later in the program, but I would like to extend my personal appreciation for his leadership and partnership these last three years. Thank you, good uh, Maria, and good morning, everyone. Our bylaws require that we hold an annual meeting of the trustees each year to elect new trustees, board members, and the executive committee. Due to COVID-19 and adhering to city and county guidelines to maintain social distancing, this year's business meeting and the voting on officers and directors was conducted via email. Voting on the slate of nominees took place between June 11th and June 16th. We thank our trustees for their flexibility in still getting the job done via email this year. I'm pleased to say we exceeded quorum, which for our bylaws is a majority of one fourth of our trustees. The two pieces of business is ratified by the majority vote of members were the approval of the minutes for the 2019 annual meeting and the election of new board members and executive committee. Here to present the elected officers and board members, please welcome our nominating committee chair, Robert Sanchez. Thank you, Carlos. I now present the new slate of members elected to United Way's board. Elected to serve a one-year term to fill a vacancy in the class of 2021 is Ismari Monreal. Elected to serve a three-year term as members of the class of 2023 are Eddie Dominguez, Luis Gamoneda, Calixto Garcia Velez, Melissa Gracie, Xavier Gonzalez, Jess Lawhorn Jr., Gladys Reed, Jerry Reed, Jacqueline Sanchez, Gene Schaefer, and Mike Valdez Fowley. The following will serve on the executive committee from 2020 to 2021. Board Chair Robert Sanchez, Immediate past chair, Carlos Magoya. Secretary, John Sunberg. Treasurer, Carmen Sabater. Chair of the Finance and Administration, Gene Schaefer. 2020 cam Campaign Co-Chair, Frank Gonzalez. Co-Chair of Community Impact, Daryl Payne. Co-Chair of Center for Excellence in Early Education, Lisa Mendelson, Chair of Engagement, Camilla Cody, Chair of Marketing, Melissa Gracie, Members at Large, Andrew Anson and Baldwin English, Member Emeritus, Jane Harris Abbas, Co-Counsel, Jorge, Jorge Hernandez Doraño and Susan Potter Norton, and President and CEO, Maria C. Alonzo. Also for your information, we have five ex officio appointments to the board. Miami-Dade County Mayor, Carlos Jimenez, Miami-Dade County Public Schools Superintendent, Alberto Carvalho, Michael Gold, past co-chair of our Young Leaders, Kathy Alexander, past chair of Women United, and Maria Martinez, our Miami-Dade County Schools student representative to the board. Carlos, that concludes the nominating report. Thank you, Robert, and congratulations, and thank you all to elected board members and executive committee members. I would like to thank the outgoing board members for their dedication and service during their term. 
and thank you to the nominating committee members who were tasked with the very difficult job of finalizing the slate for our trustees' approval. These are Kim Riffin Hunter, Juan Carlos Licano, Lisa Mendelson, Carmen Sabater, Robert Sanchez, Jay Steinman, and Maria Alonzo. I want to begin by my brief remarks today by also thanking you for joining us and for being part of this amazing United Way family. These past three years as board chair have been the culmination of more than 40 years of involvement with United Way, an organization that is very dear to me. As I look back, there are a few milestones that particularly stand out for me over the last three years. United Way turning 95 years, and we were lucky to be part of its history. Installing the first Hispanic president and CEO to lead the organization. We had two active hurricane seasons brought us bringing us Irma and Dorian, but also brought out the best in human nature. The expansion of our United Way Center for Financial Stability within the community and 10 years helping individuals and families reach financial resilience and empowerment. The local businesses joining our United Way family. And the launch of the Census 2020 campaign to raise awareness of its impact on our community's funding of resources and programs for the funding uh, the, the coming decade. It has really been an honor to be your chair for the last three years. Thank you for joining me on this journey, for giving, for volunteering, for advocating, for helping us build a stronger Miami. It is now my privilege to welcome Robert Sanchez as our new chair. Robert knows his organization well as he has been involved for many, many years, both as a volunteer and as a CEO of Rider Systems which runs a United Way workplace campaign across its entire national footprint. In addition to this year's nominating committee chair, Robert served as a member of the executive committee, co-chair of the 2017 campaign, and is a Tocqueville Society member. Robert, congratulations, and we look forward to your leadership. Carlos, thank you very much. Uh, I'm truly honored at the opportunity to serve and, and give back. Uh, as I begin my term as chair, I want to congratulate our current and new, newly elected board members. I look forward to working with all of you. Uh, this will surely be a challenging year, but I have no doubt of what we can accomplish through our collective efforts. And now for my first official duty as a board chair, it is my pleasure to thank and recognize you, Carlos, for your leadership over the past three years. So Maria, please join me. It is our distinct pleasure to present you with our traditional outgoing chairman award in recognition of years of service and your steadfast leadership as a volunteer and a supporter. Carlos, thank you so much. Thank you for your partnership over the last three years and for all of your support um, for over 40 years. Uh, as you step into your new role as immediate past chair, one that I know you've been looking forward to, um, <laughs> I do, uh, I am so thrilled to be able to continue to work with you in this new capacity. I also uh, know that I would be remiss if I wouldn't thank you for your invaluable role in, in uh, guiding our governor as part of the Reopen Florida Task Force, benefiting all communities across the state of Florida. So thank you and congratulations. And next time I see you, I will have this award to present uh, to you that I hope you will uh, display with pride. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Uh, it's now time for the best part of this morning's meeting when we celebrate our dedicated volunteers. So to do the honors, I pass the screen to Pat Morris, who is a longtime dedicated United Way volunteer, a member of our engagement committee, and the head of uh, volunteer Miami subcommittee. Pat? Thank you, Robert. Oop, let me take this mask off. Gracias, Roberto, for your leadership. It is truly a privilege to present this year's volunteer awards. Volunteering and civic engagement has always been a part of my life and has enriched both my professional and personal worlds. In fact, I met my wife volunteering. So it is very near and dear to me. Our volunteers are the backbone of United Way. Honoring them as a group today takes on a special meaning. Their selfless giving and unwavering commitment and dedication these past weeks and months under the most challenging conditions has been inspiring and in fact humbling. All the volunteers on behalf of the United Way, Volunteer Miami, and our entire community 
and all the families you have helped get through these most trying times. On behalf of all of them, we are forever grateful. This year, as in the past, we receive a great number of nominations of remarkable individuals giving back in their own special way. Their names are scrolling on your screens. Please take a moment to look at them. I am sure you will most definitely recognize one or more of our finalists nominated this year. Once again, congratulations. You are all winners for our community. Before we present you this year's honorees, I'd like to thank our 2020 Volunteer Awards judges, whose names you see on the screen, for carrying out the arduous task of choosing one of the winners in each of the categories from among so many great selections. They are members of Reading Pals, our Giving Communities, the Engagement Committee, and the Community Impact Council. We, as they, get to learn of these quiet heroes in our community through their stories and what they are doing to make our world and our community a better place. Now let's get down to business. Our first award is our Public Service Leadership Award. This award recognizes both local public servants and community leaders who have displayed a remarkable sense of commitment to hard work, courageous leadership, and a dedication to improving services for children, youth, and families in our community. Our honoree is none other than Florida State Representative Vance Alupas. His life's work has indeed been focused on education reform, in particular early learning education. Those early first years when children develop cognitively, socially, and emotionally, as a young lawyer, it didn't take him long to understand that his passion for public policy and education reform had to take a different direction. So in 2010, Vance joined the Children's Movement of Florida, one of the state's largest early childhood organizations where he currently serves as CEO. After a decade of educating and advocating for better policies without the results he wanted by his own admission, he decided to throw his hat in the ring and run for elected office to provide a voice in Florida House for effective change in early education, affordable housing, and to help Alice families. And boy, he sure has. Among his accomplishments since taking office was erasing a five-year waiting list for immigrant children to receive health services under the Florida Kid Care Program and the passing of a bill he sponsored to strengthen early learning professional training and create career advancement opportunities for the early learning professionals. He is currently working on legislation to move the Office of Early Learning from the Office of Economic Opportunity to the Department of Education in order to better align VPK and school readiness programs with K-12 education. His goal is to make early childhood education an even more significant part of Florida's vision for educational equity. Representative Alupas currently serves on the House's Education Committee and Pre-K-12 Innovation Subcommittee and Pre-K-12 Appropriations Subcommittee and others for continually bringing children's issues to the forefront of public policy dialogue and for supporting policies critical to our Alice families. It is my honor to present the 2020 United Way Public Service Leadership Award to my good friend, Representative Vance Alupas. Congratulations, Representative Alupas, on behalf of all the families of Miami-Dade County and throughout the state of Florida. The floor is yours. Hey everyone, it's Vance Alupas. I gotta be honest, it's a little bit awkward filming an acceptance speech alone in your office with an iPhone, but we are in the midst of a pandemic, so we'll just have to make do. But I just wanna thank from the bottom of my heart, the United Way for this remarkable honor. In the last 10 years of my life, I've had the privilege of working alongside one of our community's greatest public servants, Dave Lawrence Jr. And to be a part of the journey that he embarked on two decades ago, uh, alongside many of you, the Early Learning Coalition, the Children's Trust, obviously the United Way. You know, to me, I could not, I, I could not think of a more uh, necessary battle, a more urgent battle. And to be totally honest, my path to the Florida legislature was paved with the belief that we needed a voice for children in our state capitol. And I feel so honored to be a part of that process, to feel as though uh, I can be a voice for so many children uh, so many childcare facilities, so many providers, so many of the stakeholders in this space 
when for so many years we didn't have one. So to receive this award is really just the cherry on top of what I believe is an incredible honor to begin with. But I wanna say this from the bottom of my heart to all of you who are on this call, you have been part of this battle and the battle is not over. There is so much more left that we need to do, but I am truly honored. I am truly grateful for this recognition. And I pray that in the, in the years ahead, we will see transformational change for uh, our state's children. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Representative Alupas. This next award celebrates Monsignor Walsh's spirit by recognizing an individual who committed time and talent to help shape a caring, responsive social service delivery system, positively impacting the quality of social services in Miami-Dade community and always responding to the emergent community service needs. If there was ever a champion for older adults and their family caregivers, it is today's honoree. I'm speaking of none other than Carlos Martinez, President and CEO of United Home Care Services. Before stepping into his current role as CEO, Carlos served as the organization's CFO from 2008 to 2015. By merging metrics and compassion, he has ensured that United Healthcare provides the best and most affordable care without compromising quality for a moment. The organization's 900 employees provide a variety of essential services and supports for nearly 3,600 frail and disabled adults and their family caregivers. These services are oftentimes a lifeline for the most vulnerable members of our community. As CEO, he has spearheaded numerous initiatives and paved the path to raise awareness and create change through social reforms that have and will continue to have a profound impact on the quality of social services in South Florida. There is the Home Health Aid Training Program offered in kind to those who want to enter the field. The Intergenerational Advocacy Volunteerism Program bringing together young and older adults the residences of United Home Care, which transformed the landscape of assisted senior living by raising the bar significantly and creating a safer environment for all older adults. As the waiting list for older adult services continue to grow in Miami-Dade County, Carlos rem remains a strong voice for older adult causes and for the unmet needs of older adults and their caregivers. Through ingenuity, experience, and plain old hard work, dedication and compassion. Carlos and his team bring solutions to our community that help our older adults and disabled adults live happier and healthier lives. I am honored to present the 2020 Monsignor Walsh Outstanding Human Services Professional Award to none other than Carlos Martinez. Carlos, congratulations. Thank you. I'm honored to receive this highly prestigious and legendary award. Monsignor Brian Walsh was a great humanitarian and respected leader in our community. He championed home care programs for the elderly and homeless and mended community relations bringing unity and diversity through social action. As head of Operacion Pedro Pan, many Cuban children were able to flee communist oppression in Cuba and grow up in the land of the free. This award is significant to me and to our organization. What a great example for us to emulate. I'm humbled for the consideration that was given to me by our partners at United Way. So on behalf of our 800 employees and volunteers, thank you. I'm blessed to lead United Home Care in our mission to help families care for their aging relatives. And it is in our fabric of our existence and corporate DNA. Again, thank you and many blessings. Thank you, Carlos. This next award, the Essie Silver Community Builder Award, recognizes an individual who has been able to address particular challenges in our community affecting different cultural or ethnic groups and bring those groups together. This year's honoree is a true community leader who has used her deep understanding of the law to advocate for those who find it difficult to speak for themselves. She is a powerful voice for those whose voices have been muted. It is an honor to present this award to Virginia Acar. Virginia has advocated for human rights her entire life. An attorney with a master's of laws degree in intercultural human rights she has not only tirelessly but creatively addressed problems affecting our community. She founded the nonprofit Strong Girls to reduce poverty, especially among young women 
in many parts of Miami-Dade County where poverty rates are higher than the national and state averages. The program partners with schools in Miami-Dade to provide girls third grade through graduation skills and tools to stay focused on learning and stay on a path toward a career. Strong Girls was the recipient of the Inspire 305's 2019 Grand Innovator Award. Shifting her focus, Virginia built a partnership with Miami-Dade County Public Schools to reach deeply into our community through Young Musicians Unite, providing free access to music education to deserving children throughout the school system, regardless of their socioeconomic background. Through the power of music, she has empowered more than 2,500 students in over 16 public schools over the last seven years. With her passion, persistence, and tireless energy, Virginia is helping to break a cycle of poverty by providing opportunities for our Miami-Dade youth. Whether it's building mentorship programs for girls in Alapata or an after-school music program in Liberty City, she is helping to build a stronger Miami for all of us. I would now like to invite David Pruna of Center State Bank, our award sponsor, to present the award. Thank you, David, and once again, congratulations, Virginia. Good morning, United Way. I am David Pruna, Miami-Dade and Monroe County President for Center State Bank. It is a true privilege to support and partner with the United Way and its mission in making our community a better one each and every day. I also want to say thank you for allowing Center State to present the S.E. Silva Community Builder Award. This year award recipient has been an advocate for human rights throughout her entire life. She is described as passionate, persistent, and full of energy. Please help me in congratulating this year's recipient, Ms. Virginia Acar, founder of Strong Girls Inc. Congratulations. I'm beyond honored to be receiving the Essie Silva Community Builder Award at this particular time in our history. Because like Essie Silva, I believe that building bridges, not walls, to connect, unite, and honor our community is the key to long-lasting positive social change. Miami is a multicultural melting pot full of lots of flavor and lots of different spices. We're anything but one-dimensional in this town, and our Strong Girls program echoes that. We use a multi-tiered, holistic approach that addresses academic, social, emotional, and physical well-being. We teach our girls to honor their heritage, to embrace their culture, and learn from one another. At the core of everything we do is the belief that every human being deserves to be treated with dignity. So thank you, United Way, for the honor of this award. The Dorothy Schuler Award for Outstanding Volunteerism recognizes an individual who exemplifies volunteerism and whose commitment to bringing hope, promise, and opportunity into the lives of others has made a lasting, positive impact on a person, group, or community at large. Our honoree today is Anna Vega Milton. She absolutely epitomizes a tireless generosity of spirit. Her remarkable volunteerism and philanthropy have touched and enhanced countless areas of our community. As president and CEO of the Jose Milton Foundation, she has supervised the contribution of millions of dollars to causes benefiting our community. From funding the first state-of-the-art recording studio in collaboration with Miami-Dade County Public Schools to encouraging young musicians and creating STEM scholarships for minority students to building fitness centers in underserved areas of Miami to helping frontline healthcare workers battling COVID-19. Wherever and whenever there is a need in our community, we can count on Anna. She is always at the vanguard of identifying not only an issue, but a range of solutions. She is generous not only with her funding, but with her time. Serving on the boards of directors of many active foundations, including United Way's executive board, in addition to chairing our engagement committee that I've had the opportunity to work with her on. She is a strong advocate of education. She often takes on grassroots teaching roles where she can directly and personally inspire others. On a personal note, I'd like to say that Anna is also engaging her children in her philanthropy. So it is the next generations of Miltons that are also gonna have a huge impact on our community. 
Thank you, Anna. Please welcome Carlos Martinez of the United Home Care Services, our award sponsor to present the award. To our dear friend, Ana Vega Milton, congratulations. You're so deserving of the Dorothy Shula Award for Outstanding Volunteerism. United Home Care and so many safety net organizations in our community have come to value your knowledge and heart. Thank you and the Milton family for your contributions to the Miami community. Thank you, Pat and United Way for this honor. And thank you, University of Miami's Josh Friedman for nominating me. Go Canes! My commitment to South Florida and United Way runs deep. I'm so very grateful to have a supportive family that encourages community engagement and volunteerism. Since I sincerely believe that these expressions of social interaction, these expressions of love, are the most genuine and organic way to build community. By giving of time, talent, treasure, introducing one's ties, or sharing testimonials, the five T's of volunteerism, we make our community better together. Once again, thank you, United Way. Thank you, Carlos, and thank you once again, Anna, for all you do for our community. The Outstanding Youth Award honors a Miami-Dade County youth 18 years of age and younger for leadership, commitment, and character through service and volunteerism. This year, we had a pool of 16 entries, and the screening committee had the very tough task of narrowing the group down to five finalists. Elizabeth Berenguer launched Codella, a nonprofit whose mission is to introduce coding to underrepresented girls ages 8 to 13 through year-round programming. Krista Curry's Krista Cares provides homeless women living in shelters with purses filled with toiletries and much needed items for women. Mohammed Alahi started the Golden Mentorship Program to help incoming ninth graders succeed by pairing them up with seniors who could teach them the ropes. Henry Hurwitz developed the nonprofit Foodies to help fight hunger while reducing food waste. Ben Thorpe founded the Miami Mentors Club at his high school to recruit tutors and mentors to serve the big brothers and big sisters youth. And Gabriela Ergara, who lost her sister to an undetected heart condition. As a result, she established EKG screenings in her neighborhood and school. And there you have them our future philanthropic community leaders. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you for all the amazing work you do on behalf of our community. Now, on to this year's winner. And the 2020 Outstanding Youth Award goes to Krista Curry. Krista is a sophomore at Barbara Coleman Senior High. Krista has a soft spot for the mothers and children living on the streets, and so, what started out as a simple stuffing old purses with toiletries to deliver to homeless women flourished into what is now Krista Cares. The nonprofit has now grown, includes donations such as Christmas blankets for veterans and patients at the Miami VA Medical Center, toy drives for local children, book bag and school supply drives for children and youth in shelters, and the bag lady services to the women. Every year during Mother's Day, Krista and her organization helps organize a Mother's Day event at the Mayfair Hotel and invites moms from the local shelters to celebrate with gifts, entertainment, and lunch. Krista is committed and always works hard to ensure all of her projects are completed and has, at times, used her own money from birthday gifts and allowances to purchase needed items when donations are sparse. Krista has truly enhanced the quality of life for so many homeless women and their children by showing them compassion and giving them a glimmer of hope. She proves that it really is the simple things that can truly make a difference in someone's life and doing it with a smile can leave a lasting impression. Please welcome Juan Carlos Lascano of American Airlines, our award sponsor to say a few words. Hi, Krista. My name is Juan Carlos Lascano, and I am the Vice President of Miami, the Caribbean, and Latin America for American Airlines. You know, our community is always in need of caring souls that look out for the less fortunate. 
which is why I'm so happy to say congratulations to you on receiving the Outstanding Youth Award. Your love of volunteerism shines through Krista Cares, and it's wonderful to see young adults like you making a difference right here in South Florida. In trying times like the ones we're living now, your work matters even more. Your passion not only gives those in need physical items, but also gives them the gift of self-esteem and a sense of stability and hope. You are truly an inspiration for all of us. So on behalf of your American Airlines family here, congratulations again. I'm so honored and grateful to be the recipient of the United Way Outstanding Youth Award. I appreciate the nomination for Ms. Nao Feng Lu, the Vice President of the Jack and Jill of Miami chapter. I have enjoyed watching Krista Cares grow through the people I've helped. I started the organization when I was 10 years old. Aside from the challenges I faced, it made me stronger and encouraged me to keep on moving forward. Krista Cares offers a helping hand to women and children in poverty by providing community resources and opportunities with dignity and compassion in an effort to help them regain their self-respect and independence. I continue doing what I do because I love seeing the after effects of my work come to life. It started off only touching a few women and being funded by my mom's small checks. And now it has gotten bigger and I'm able to assist the many more women with the support of big sponsors such as AT&T, Menchies of Miami Lakes, Mayfair Hotel, Jack and Jill, and Roy Law Firm. In all, I look forward to Krista Care's growing and developing more sponsorships and relationships to touch the lives of more people, and I shall stay persistent and open to the possibilities and suggestions. Once again, I want to thank my friends and family for always being by my side, supporting me through the circumstances. Thank you. Finalists and winners. Congratulations also to all board members and executive committee members who were elected today. I look forward to working with all of you over the coming year. Thank you all for joining us, if only virtually, and I hope that we'll be able to see each other soon. Until then, please stay safe and healthy. This annual meeting is now adjourned.